It is March the 9th, 2024. My name is Chris, and this is The Future of Photography. The Future of Photography. Hey, how's it going, Jeremiah? Good, good. I was almost tempted to do this experiment where I'd wear my goggles and see <laughs> and do this in a persona version, but I'll leave that for another week to see if that's possible. I don't know. If so, okay, okay. Before we dive into today's topic, and by the way, Adrian, not here today, as you noticed, um, he'll be back soon. Um, so, just before we dive into today's topic, which is not about the, uh, the, the Vision Pro at all, but... Um, so I've I've seen other people uh, in I'm not, I'm not, I haven't I haven't had a conference with anyone wearing them and using their persona, which is this fake three D scanned kind of uh, version of them. But I guess you have done that with others that have, I have. these. I have. If, if you look at this at this persona thing just on a YouTube video, it's quite uncanny, quite eerie. <laughs> what is it? What is it like? after like 20 minutes because i i hear that people say yeah sure no it goes away it just becomes normal oh Is i that... couldn't last 20 minutes <laughs> really <laughs> uh, yeah it's very disconcerting and and you know that you know they're working on in fact i think they just issued a uh an update this week to improve it uh <laughs> but it, but it, there's a lot of room for improvement um i mean we, what we, we have to we have to agree the, the the vision pro is at this point probably as bad as it'll ever be it only become better over yes time. in other words it's a dazzling dazzling piece of of technology but it yeah. doesn't have some it does have some shortcomings sure there's kludges around it i mean i'm interested to see if i can create obviously i can create an avatar of myself that's pretty good pretty accurate mm -hmm. And can I import that and animate it using the Apple API so I have a little more control over it? I don't know. Um, we, we'll, are, we'll, we'll soon have a virtual version of you on the podcast that is fully automated by an AI. Sure. And, Voice sure. too. Of anyway, <laughs> let's plunge into our topic. <laughs> All right. Today. I woke up this morning to the news that Nikon bought Red. I don't know when that happened. Probably in the last few days that yes. was announced. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, red is okay. Let's, let's just take this step by step. First of all, Nikon, Nikon, whichever way you want to pronounce it, we know that company red might not be that well known to some of the listeners. So let's just go into, into that red was, uh, founded in 2005, um, by the previous owner or founder of Oakley, the guy with the sunglasses. Uh, Jim Janner is his name. And they have been this Silicon Valley startup that started making movie cameras, as in very highly modular cameras where you would like piece together the 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 back and the and the storage and call the, it what it what it really was. A computer that has a lens on the front right. and storage on the back. Okay, so so mm -hmm. Nikon bought these guys, and of course, uh, Nikon for a while has been this for me at least in my in my um, perception has been this company that was almost a bit on the way out, no innovation, no new stuff, and uh, I think this is going to change a few things. So Boy, do we 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 disagree on this. Uh, 100%. Do we? Yeah. Do we? Okay. Okay. Let's 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 uh, let's see. Let's see. So, my, my thinking is, uh, if we look at the movie industry, there is one big company for for filming. That's Ari. Ari is the big one. I'll, is that is that correct? It is. Uh, so, you know, so Sony is making big big headway, right? Um, in in terms of quality, uh, but uh, you know, no one will ever bat an eyelash when you go. No, we're going to shoot this on an Ari. So Ari, um, you you would you would they they have the info they they have the gear they have the lenses they have the lights they have the 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 network they have the service. So if you want to do a production, typically you do not buy cameras, you rent them. So you would uh, some someone from Ari would bring the cameras to your set. So well, it's a. Yeah, well, I mean. Uh, 
a version of that. I mean, or a know, version here, of you... that. So, so uh, the, the other company um, that's not in the film, in the movie business, but is kind of is Canon because a lot of Canon lenses are being used, as far as I know. Um, Nikon hasn't been in that field at all. I, I would say, having been a um, a user of both of these cameras as mm -hmm. well as Ari's, um, I, I I have some kind of deep uh, felt both on the kind of knee jerk emotional reaction to these companies um, and the practical uh, application of these companies mm -hmm. and uh, a knowledge of what happens when two companies with very distinct DNA um, merge. <laughs> so, so, so we are probably going to see, going to see a culture clash here. I, I believe we're going to see a massive cult culture we have clash. The, we have the traditional Japanese company, and then we have the California startup. You know, Red is a company that totally upended the, the, cin the, the cinematic approach um, to making uh, TV and film. Mm -hmm. When they first um, introduced their cameras, it was, I mean, and we were very, <laughs> big surprise, early adopters. <laughs> and, and I remember I was working on a show where we changed one year from an Ari to a Red because the cinematographer was very dazzled by the, um, I think it was, we were working in 4K and it, it was, it was uh, amazing. The Ari, um, Ari has been a traditional and very uh, um, AC assistant cameraman um, supported machine. In other words, when you're on set, there's an in intuitive aspect for the assistant cameraman who is responsible for, you know, changing lenses, adopting, uh, adjusting the parameters and follow focus, etc. And um, Ari's just, nobody gave it a second thought in terms of its practical use on set. And, and everyone friendly. had knowledge of how to operate an Ari. That's just, Yeah, and, and yeah. they made a beautiful transition, I believe, from film um, to digital. And as the chips became more robust, the quality improved, etc. Plus, the operating system was, again, very friendly. When, and, and Ari also... Uh, I think, and I could be very, very mistaken, but I believe they made the the last film camera. I think it was called a four one six. It was a sixteen millimeter camera, um, with very, very quick changing magazines. Um, it felt like a digital camera, only the capture was on film, and it was re it was designed for recording only, really. So you recorded, you digitized, and you finished on uh, electronic media, and that was it. And it was a fantastic camera. I did a, a movie. I wanted more grain in the movie, natural grain, and, and so I, I shot it with it. And it was just a great experience. Uh, and that was probably the last time I used um, film um, to shoot. Um, so our, that, that's Ari's position there. Um, Red came into the industry with the passion of Oakley mm -hmm. to create something special. I mean, in a way, it was that Steve Jobs vibe. I'm going to upend the computer business. I'm going to make something so different, so uh, high quality, um, you know, hang the expense. I'm just going to do it, but I'm going to try to make it really affordable. And that's what they did. Um, and having used all the reds, um, you know, from its first iteration, it was a very cumbersome proposition for the ACs to put it mildly, because as I mentioned, it was a computer with a lens. It, you had to kludge a lot of things. It was not the fastest thing to kind of, um, set up and, and tweak. However, the quality of the images just blew everybody away. So you had the, uh, this is a hassle. You know, 
running and gunning with with the early reds was something you would never conceive of. Yeah. But the quality of the imagery was spectacular. And so it came out of passion and they established great relationships with DPs. They brought them in, the interaction, the, the evolution of the company was very geared towards the industry. And also they, they were not shy about saying, no, take it on a photo shoot. The quality is so good. You could hose a sequence down, choose a frame and it would be beautiful. And it was. Uh, so their innovation and their focus was um, really, really a a welcoming um, a adjunct to the film business, and it really upended everyone, including Sony Panavision, Ari itself. Everyone went, "Oh my God, we've got to now compete with that," and that started a race to the top in terms of quality and ease of use. So, so, that, so, so it gave, it gave the big, the Aries and the others, a, a well-needed competition. Not unlike Tesla, for yeah. example, when Tesla yeah. came in, all the other car companies went, oh, man, we better, we better get on this bandwagon. And, and, you know, and they did. And, and right. I, so I think the influence of Tesla is far beyond its own cars, but more towards others. Um, so is it is it still that way? Because Ari is now almost twenty years old. So it's is it is it an established player? Uh, has everyone arranged themselves with uh, R, with with Red? Um, is no, it... no, no, no. Now I think things have have become um, quite. Um, we'll call it. It just depends on the on the look you're going for. Like every chip of a cinema digital cinema camera is like a different film stock that that's how i would i would relate to it so chip a from sony with skin tones and color and whatnot the logs that they use is a little bit different than red a little bit of the ari and panavision etc which uses sony um all of these chips give a slightly different feel. Now we're all working in the same kind of space of 4K or 8K or 6K. And these are, um, I think those innovations are great because then it becomes subjective and you can, you know, you can choose the cameras you want. Lenses, they all use the same lenses. And there's a, you know, whether it's Cook or Lights or Sony or, you know what I mean? I mean, the lens qualities now are, again, it's very subjective. Sometimes you want so razor sharp. And the, the, you know. the, the lenses, um, I, I think the, the mount that is in use uh, all across the industry is the PL mount. Um, PL, yeah. And, and, and lenses by whoever, Canon and so on, are being adapted yeah. to the PL Any mount. Anybody who's in the glass business has to adapt if they want to be in the cinema. Okay, okay. so right. so th that's that's the the influence of red, innovative, interesting, not always perfect, but driving the industry forward. Now let's talk about Nikon. <laughs> Nikon. <laughs> I, as a ex commercial photographer, generally uh, for kind of more formal work, I would use Hasselblad. But on my kind of run and gun, easy on the street, that kind of thing, I used uh, Nikon. Mm -hmm. And I was an avid Nikon user. I had an F, an F1, an F2, motorized, you name it. I still have a bevy of great Nikon lenses, um, you know, in, in my in my closet. So so I I, I was a fully throated advocate of Nikon when I was a photographer. They seem to be very um, advanced in pushing the limits. Um, and it was only Canon that, ca when Canon first came out, that they started to push uh, Nikon forward. And that became the, the, you know, the back and forth in this still company. But Nikon reminds me of Uh, Nokia, who were very, very innovative at the beginning, but the size of the company, the DNA of the company was such that they, I didn't ever felt that they were very innovative and slowly they became a laggard in terms of photograph uh, quality. Um, you had companies like Lumix, Panavis, you know, uh, Panavis, uh, 
Panasonic. Lumix, Canon, of course, really driving um, forward. Uh, those those two really, really kind of pushed everything. And, and I started to see, feel on every level, whether it's kind of a, a point and shoot camera or professional grade cameras, their lenses and their operating system and their cameras themselves were not as interesting as Canon. And when you have a company that is a non-innovative company with the DNA as such, just relying on their brand, as it were, combining with a company whose DNA is complete innovation, hang the, hang the expense in many ways, we want this to be the best, you have a clash of cultures. And I feel because of the size of Nikon, they are going to, they need it for their own PR, for their own, um, their own presentation of being, quote, an advanced company. But I feel that the, the DNA of these companies are so different that I don't believe we're going to see any real innovation. Um, coming forth, and I actually think that they are, that they may destroy the innovation that Un Red has always represented. Unless Red, un unless they leave it alone and just own a few things. I have I have three things I want to talk about. The first is the patents that Red has on the Red Raw format. Mm -hmm. So um, that has become a, a pretty important codec to compress um to raw compress the the the, the footage, um, huge files. They have this like really interesting proxy system and so on. Um, and the other companies don't really have that. The only company that made a um, a deal, a patent deal of some sort, a licensing deal with Red was Nikon. They had it in the I think Z8 um, raw video. Based on the on the red raw format, is that something that you think might be why Nikon bought them? <clears throat> I, I I can only think that the reason they bought them is for an, out of a desperate need for an innovative group to come in and light a fire under their own. That, that's the only reason because codecs now are fresh blood. Say, yeah, it's a dime a dozen. In other words, you know, I like my Kodak better than your Kodak. <laughs> well, you know, the the other thing is that uh, that Nikon has always been um, kind of dependent on Sony for their sensors. Yeah, Nikon's use Sony. Most of them use Sony sensors, and uh, Red makes their own sensors. They have an 8K global shutter sensor, and global shutter is. You remember just a few months ago, um, global shutter is an important thing, and uh, yeah, you have to buy that from Sony if you want it at this point. So yeah, they, they, are buy, mean, they are buying technology here. I mean, talent. my feeling is that the company that's been consistently innovative on the lenses and chips is Sony. Uh, they're they're. Their work is is kind of yeah, undoubtedly the best at this point. Yeah, yeah, and and so <clears throat> I think maybe, and again, I'm speculating that uh, Nikon saw this as an opportunity to go head to head against Sony because they were losing losing ground. Certainly in the cinema area, nobody really talks about Nikon at all, um, and I don't think even in still photography. I mean, what what Nikon has is a brand. Uh, the ability to advertise um, a history of very, very good products, solid. Um, but if you start at point and shoot cameras to c prosumers to professional, both lenses, bodies, and then into cinema, you, you know, Nikon is never on the tip of your tongue when you're talking about these, uh, the, you know, the, these hardware or software solutions. Um, red has always been on the tip of one's tongue when talking about that. So I can't see, un unless red's profit margin was spectacular, 
And I have a feeling, again, this is a feeling, I don't know anything about the internal uh, economics of these companies, but maybe Red needed a big cash infusion in order to step up, and that would be Nikon. Because it takes um, it takes two, right? Um, it takes yeah. a company that needs something, and it takes another company that needs something, and then you turn this into a, a win-win. Yeah. Now, uh, but again, I think, you know, we've seen companies with um, distinctly different DNAs in terms of their where the company came from, what the what the sensibility is from the top, and um, I see them as very opposite kind of companies. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm I'm with you. I'm I'm one hundred percent with you. Um, now, of course, what I also think is that they did well. Okay, two 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 ways this could have gone. First is, of of course, they have they have talked about this about the different cultures. That is pretty obvious. They had to. Um, or it was so much money on the table that they they didn't they, they couldn't argue. It was like, okay, that's it. We're out. It's on the other there's another scenario where Red said, Oh, I see. They'll buy us, but we'll eat them from within. In other words, they may have a plan. <clears throat> to completely take over the culture of Nikon and make it really innovative. Is that, is, okay, so, so. Ask me if I believe that. <laughs> right, right. I, I think, I, th I think this That's is. That's the pretty, optimist view. I think this is pretty far-fetched. Looking, looking at, at what, 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 what I know about, or what I think I know about Japanese corporate culture, um, that doesn't. No, no, there, there's no way. There's no way that's that. That's <laughs> well, maybe, maybe they'll try. I mean, they, they have been bold from the start, so um, yeah, uh, I, you know, I, you, but you know, you could look at the history of Japanese companies buying American companies, and you know, whether it's a film studio or a car company, what it, whatever it is, um. I'm not sure that the success has always been at the forefront of these business decisions. They, they felt good initially. They felt exciting. There was a good press release. But when push comes to shove, I mean, what is what does Nikon need to do in the market to excite people like you and I, Chris? What, what can they do? I mean, when there is a new red, I'm interested in reading all about it. When Sony comes out with a a new lens, a faster lens, you know, if they introduce, say, a 0.95 equivalent, you know, cinema lens that was just very narrow depth of field with autofocus and all of that, so you can hold a narrow depth of field shot in a moving shot, that would be exciting. That would be innovative. But when has Nikon, the last 20 years, come up with a product, still photograph, lens, or, or software, that really lit a fire with creative people worldwide? I can't remember. Yep. I can't <laughs> either. No. So. And, and you're talking to, we're people who like, We'll dig for this information. I mean, the, 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 the thing is, Nikon has quite a stellar reputation when it comes to quality, to image quality, for example. I've, I, I remember um, that was in the, in the DSLR days, like 5D Mark II, Canon 5D Mark II, and up, where uh, all the Nikons that I saw around me on different like photo tours and so on um, always had just that little bit of additional crispness and nicer colors and things but you would you would look around on on the statistics and say okay canon is the leader in numbers yeah. so uh, but they do have a reputation and maybe they are yeah as you said maybe they're trying to reinvigorate their yeah. innovative well, on, side on the other hand i mean one could argue that you know nikon and canon in terms of the still market certainly when it comes to Film photography are completely equivalent. I, I, you know, it's just a matter of, you know, apples or oranges, whatever you like. I think it becomes a little bit more cloudy when you start to think about 
cinematic approach. Nikon is not known for moving pictures and digital innovation. Um, well, maybe not. they will turn into a powerhouse. Yes, the question is how. Possible. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's that's ev everything. Most of it is speculation at this point. Yeah, it's so. all execution. I'm I'm fascinated by, and and in a way, a little disappointed because the startup that Red was uh, always came out of a a man who I thought just wanted to upset the industry and and push it. You know, hang the expense. Let's make a camera, even if we make a very little bit of money on it that is transformative. I don't see that happening. <laughs> I'm not gone. It's going to be back to the number crunchers. And um, I, I fear that they're going to acquire the Codex. They're going to acquire, you know, the, 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 the IP. And then they're going to try and integrate that maybe into their still system. That would make sense. Um, and come up with something that could be marketed fine. The question is, will they be able to regain a position that puts them ahead of Sony, for example, whose quality is, I mean, as anybody listening to this podcast know that I'm, you know, I'm a Leica shooter with cameras, but um, I've shot a lot with, Panasonic, Panasonic Lumix and Sony's, the qualities are just, they're spectacular. They're really, really great. And Sony in particular, my beef with Sony is always on the operating system and the, the kind of engineering that needs to happen when you're, when you're in the field. You know, I like a more analog approach. Maybe it's because of my age or how I learned photography, but I like the tactile uh, feel of it. It's the same thing when I, you know, when I drive uh, our Tesla. One of my beefs about Tesla, and I, I do like my car, but the screen and the, you know, it, there's not enough. You're missing interact. the dials and the buttons. <laughs> yes, I don't want to take my, you know, if I'm traveling 70 miles an hour on a highway, I don't want to start looking at a TV screen to turn on my windshield wipers, right? Uh, you know, I, I want the buttons. Um, so well, for, but, for that you do have a button. You might you might not have found it just yet. It's my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, yeah, pro probably probably not much we can speculate about where this will go. I think time will have to tell. Um, the culture clash. I can totally see that. Yes, absolutely. Um, so I think I think it's still exciting. Things are happening. Things are moving, and maybe that will. That will make make space for another red to come up in the future. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I I think that there's always the law of unintended consequences here, and something that we can't even speculate on may come out of this. I mean, there's there's one one example is uh, Kronos. Kronos is uh, a camera, a high speed camera made by a guy in his like or used to be made by a guy with a, with a community around it um a tinkerer a really good one at that and uh he started looking at the um phantoms and so on the ones that go tens yeah. of thousands of frames or hundreds of thousands of frames per second yeah. and uh, he built one of that in a form factor of a dslr like small ha handy and uh he i think started with something like a few hundred frames and now he's up to like tens of thousands of frames per second um and that became very popular in circles like in youtuber circles there, there there's a lot of a lot of um people on youtube um of these makers who who now have access to a high speed camera that costs a fraction of the big phantoms so maybe something like that will happen again and uh take take the industry from a different angle so sure i i think that that's possible um and especially in in days like these where a lot of people learn a lot of things very fast yeah and uh, especially in like the electronics field and in the in the general maker field so sure i i think also every time a new chip design comes online in terms of mm -hmm. size speed you know quality um that Every, you know, the camera designers certainly, you know, take note and go, oh, look what we can do with this. 
Yeah. We can really innovate. And you know the chip makers are all over these companies going, let me present you with our latest chips. What can you do with this? So, so I do think that, again, Red has always been one to design their processors and, you know, again, innovate, innovate, innovate to the point where their cameras are really, they're just wonderful cameras now. They're, they're less computer and more camera. You know, so they've managed to listen to the world over the, you know, the decade or two that they've been listening. And, um, and you know, using a RED, using a, you know, a, a Sony, using a Panasonic, uh, all of these have different kind of qualities. Sometimes you know you're going to be doing a lot of night work and you want very high ISO without a lot of noise, or maybe you want a certain kind of noise. Um, those dictate your, you know, when you do your testing on these things, this is what determines your um, your choices. And, and uh, you know, inviting a, just because Nikon bought Red does not mean that they're going to discontinue all of the stuff that people like now, that th we're thinking about. That that would the be future. that would be counterproductive. <laughs> that would We're, be just just yeah. imagine a scenario where where Nikon goes, okay, we'll start over with uh, red. Um, let's stop selling everything. And yeah, That's that not would not happen, go right? over well. No, and 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 also we're talking here about the future of yes. photography and the future of these innovative qualities. But it would be it would be good to dig down and and maybe listen to um, anyone from Nikon or. Red talking about this because I haven't heard any discussions. Kind of whether oh, you know, I am on the lookout for podcasts yeah. at this point. <laughs> yes, there will be some, there will be some for sure. So, yeah, and not just talking the company, you know, blur PR. I'm talking about like what the expectation are. Did I, did I tell you about the, the guy who was behind the, the, the Vision Pro, the Apple Vision Pro, um, yeah, because that came out of the Verbana product, and uh, then Apple bought them, and then it took I don't know five, six years for them to to come up with a Vision Pro, and th I then think this, almost ten years, yeah. And then this guy, um, who again they were a startup, they were acquired by Apple. Uh, including their technology, including part of their people, and they um, and and then he he left Apple, and just recently did a podcast interview with uh, the Voices of VR podcast, where he talked pretty like off the cuff about things that I'm not sure Apple wanted him to talk <laughs> about. So so um, culture clash was one big thing that he said, yeah. um, but he stayed until the thing almost the thing was out. I think until a year ago. So he he led it to a certain level of finesse, and then he he left, and now he is on a podcast. It's interesting. It's interesting. Culture clash is an interesting thing. Yeah, I mean, innovation, you know, coming from below up or top down, is something that um, is always in play. Yeah. And I, I think we've we've seen in our lifetimes that most innovation comes out of the garages. Yes. Comes small. Yes. And so when you have these big companies looking to do serious innovation, their best is to just invest and step back and mm -hmm. be be a part of it. You know what I mean? <laughs> Arm's length. I mean, it, it's like what NVIDIA is doing. This is a massive company. And they're making strategic little bets. Not a lot of money. 10 million here, 15 million there on some of these um Companies that invest in, say, AI usage of, you know, customer service. And they just, you know, they just kind of plant the seeds. But the, the companies they invest in are coming out of garages. They're very, up, you know, bottom up. But they're stepping away and they're not applying the corporate uh, needs of the parent company into how the innovation is going to take place. And so there are smart ways of doing it and not. And maybe what we don't know is that um, the conditions of the deal are arm's length. In other words, we own you, but you go and and run it as a separate company. Why do I not think that? <laughs> but I don't know. Hope springs eternal. Well, let's, let's wait and see. All right. Um, 
If anyone wants to discuss, discuss these things with us, you could join us on our uh, Discord. Yeah. The link is in the show notes and on the screen. Please all right. correct all our misconceptions. Right. Maybe we're completely off the mark here. Um, time for our picks. You brought us a photo magazine that I hadn't heard of. Oh, it's terrific. This is, I, I subscribe to this. It's a Okay, one- let, me, let me read you. It says, the monthly magazine dedicated to the finest landscape photography, inside full editorials, and fluid, clean design carefully curated by the same team that brings you the medium format magazine. Uh-huh. Again, a little something for inspiration. Uh, it's wonderful. It's a subscription, $99 a year. And I think we get the yeah the covers of the of the issues there are oh, look at that they are yeah this is a beautifully curated magazine you know, just very well written their choices are spectacular they're very consistent and they never disappoint so and I'm just saying this as someone who subscribes and enjoys it and is uh, very inspired by it awesome. Good one. I wanted to share a photographer who's unfortunately not alive anymore. He died. Um, A Russian photographer called Dmitry Markov. And he was mostly known for his uh, Instagram feed where he published his photos. And at one point, um, I think the the story is uh, his camera was stolen and he switched to an iPhone and then he pretty much stuck with the iPhone. So uh, his photography, there's something about his photography that gives you a very clear indication that the picture is is taken by a person, not by a camera. Because it doesn't really matter. It doesn't seem to matter at all because um, it's just the way he... He he seems to have access to the people. Like he gets photos that you wouldn't normally get um, showing Russia and kind of behind the scenes Russia, stunning portraiture and uh, situational photography. Um, And uh, yeah, he died too early, but his photography is still out there. Yeah, it's really, this is wonderful stuff and it shows you that the great images uh, often are the result of great access. And in in that case, one hundred percent, one hundred percent, he was embedded in communities, and then he could get photos. Like, you need trust as a photographer. Yeah. You do need trust from others, yeah. otherwise they will, they they won't let their guard down, and then and they look like photos. they'll look like every other snapshot. But these are these are stunning. They're obviously Amazing, intimate. Right? Intimate. Um, you know that there was a relationship between the photographer and the subject somewhere. Yeah. Uh, they're not just taken arm's length. They are there. Like Jim Natchway's war photographs where he, he says, if you're not making the right images, you're just not close enough. So Very true. to get close, you need trust. Yeah. Very and true. And that's part of your personality, not the gear, not the film, not the lenses. Not even the subject. That's your personality at basically allowing people to allow you in um, and being respectful. Yep. So, yeah. Very true. Good good choice. All right. I think that takes us to the end of this episode. Um, Next time, Adrian will be back and then we're going to bring another interesting photo. Again, you can join us on our Discord tfttf.com slash join tfob um, our photo storage is on tfttf.com slash tfob photos and of course we're on the social media wherever you want to find us all right so, so good luck nikon <laughs> good luck red yeah and well we'll, we'll keep watching that <laughs> yeah. topic for sure all right that was it thanks everyone for being here. We'll be back in a week. Everyone, take care and bye-bye. You've been listening to The Future of Photography.
subscribe to the show wherever you get your other podcasts. Find the show notes and more information at thefutureofphotography.com.